education. Today we are looking at the first unit, C1 Carbon Chemistry, from the OCR Gateway GCC Chemistry course. Today's lesson is Chemical Changes. The objectives are looking at why we cook things, chemical changes during cooking, thermal decomposition of baking powder, and testing for carbon dioxide. So starting off on why we cook foods. Firstly, things have a better taste and texture when you cook them. Some foods are easier to digest once they're cooked. The high temperatures involved in cooking also kill off those nasty little microbes that cause disease. And some foods are poisonous from war and need to be cooked to make them edible. So there are various reasons why we cook foods. Cooking food produces new substances. That means a chemical change has occurred. So when a chemical change has occurred, you know there's been one, when there's new substances. Cooking is an irreversible change. Two examples of cooking include eggs and meat and potatoes. With eggs and meat, they are good sources of protein. Protein molecules change shape when you heat them. The energy from cooking breaks down the chemical bonds in the protein and this allows the molecule to take a different shape. This gives eggs and meat an edible texture and the change is irreversible. It's called denaturing. With potatoes, however, potatoes are plants and so each potato cell is surrounded by a cell wall. As we know, in animal cells, they just have a cell membrane, whereas in a plant cell, they have a cell membrane and a cell wall. The cell wall is actually made of cellulose but humans cannot digest cellulose, so it's difficult for us to get to the potato inside the cell. Cooking a potato basically ruptures the cell wall and um, makes it softer and flexible and much more easier to digest. But that is a chemical change, that is irreversible because we have ruptured the actual cell wall of the potato, so that, that cannot be gone, you cannot replace that. Thermal decomposition of baking powder. Thermal decomposition is basically when a substance breaks down into simpler substances when heated. Many thermal decompositions are actually helped along by a catalyst. But thermal decomposition happens when baking powder is heated. Baking powder contains sodium hydrogen and carbonate. You need, for the exam, you need to know the word equation and the symbol equation of both of these, which I'll put up on the screen. Sodium hydrogen carbonate goes to sodium carbonate and carbon dioxide and water. This is 2NaHCO3, Na2CO3, H2O, CO2. Baking powder is used in uh, baking cakes because when the sodium hydrogen carbonate when the baking powder, which contains sodium hydrogen carbonate, sorry, is heated, the thermal decomposition breaks it down, which releases the carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide makes the cake rise. You can test the carbon dioxide through bubbling it through lime water. Lime water will then become cloudy. Up on the screen is a good diagram I found, um, which shows you actually undertaking thermal decomposition of sodium hydrogen carbonate. And then you'll bubble it through, bubble the CO2 through, and it, you'll see that lime water, it will turn cloudy if there is CO2 present. So it's a good way to test. So guys, we'll just review the objectives. So firstly, why we cook things. We know it's because they have a better taste and texture. They're easier to digest once they're cooked. Um, they kill off microbes and they could be poisonous and raw. Chemical changes during cooking is an, um, it's an irreversible change and with eggs and meat it's denaturing of the protein molecules and in potatoes we're actually just rupturing the potato cell wall. Thermal decomposition of baking powder. This is the breakdown of sodium hydrogen carbonate to produce sodium carbonate, carbon dioxide and water. And you can test the carbon dioxide through bubbling it through lime water and it will turn cloudy. Thank you for watching this video and please subscribe to Chinese Education. Thank you.